This is Joel Robinson from ArtPusher.net, and you're listening to the Tim O and Harley Show. Welcome to the Tim O and Harley Show. Thank you for listening to the Timo and Harley show. I am Timo. Over there is my partner in mind crime, Mr. Ben Harley. Say hello, Harley. What is happening, people? Ben Hotmail Harley. Yes, that's me. <laughs> at Hotmail. I sat is. there and looked at that. I sat there and looked at that. It was like, that could either be Hotmail or Hotmail. Hotmail. Yeah. <laughs> you got mail. <laughs> <laughs> so how's your, how's, Ben Harley, you've had a busy week. I don't have to ask you. You've been oh, pulling goodness. a squeegee, haven't you? Yes. Oh, Tim. Oh, good grief. Yeah. It's, uh, it's been quite the week. I, uh, you know, I think because I've been, com- I complain about zombies and stuff that <laughs> I actually, they got back at me. Uh, <laughs> it wasn't through a serum or gas or anything like that or right. acid rain or nothing or whatever. It was, yes, because of printing, I became a Oof. zombie. Essentially, uh, yes. On Sunday, I, Tried to rise from my bed. <laughs> so, so you have like you have like these giant forearms with anchors tattooed on them, and yeah. you're dry, and you're dragging your knuckles. Yeah, when you no, walk I, think I was kind of dragging my uh, uh, bags under my eyes. Oh that? no, <laughs> Jesus! Uh, you know, yeah, yeah. It's like you have. I, I was. I think I was telling you, Tim, already. Yeah, you know, there's there's being tired when you go, man. I'm just tired, mm-hmm. and then there's some days you go. Oh God, I'm just exhausted. Right. I was just on the other side of exhaustion. We're not even speaking. <laughs> <laughs> Conserving your energy, huh? Oh uh, yes. I oh, need that wow. for breathing. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. So yes, uh, lots of printing being done and trying to make lots of other people happy and oh, yeah. make their dreams come true and along with mine, Timo. Yes. So <laughs> your dreams of wealth. <laughs> yes, yes, sir. Yes, yeah. my dreams of world domination. <laughs> man. Oh, wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> Taking over the uh, banking industry. There you go. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yep. Well, we got. Uh, I, I've been real busy too, watching stuff. I'm going to go through. The only yeah. thing I wanted to mention is remind everybody that uh, in the space time continuum, as you hear this, yes, I do believe that uh, we are Ultraman will be playing at the Liars Club in Chicago this weekend. Ooh. Uh, for Is like, Chi-Town? yeah, for like one of those, nice. uh, the ride fest after party things. We're playing at the oh, Liars cool. Club Saturday yeah. night. I believe that would be September 15th, uh, with the Bow Evils from up there in ah, Chicago. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, Chi-Town. yeah, I'm not going to be able to wear my Lambeau Field hat. I don't think up in Chicago. Don't no. think I'm going to be able to do that. Yeah. <laughs> kind of hard to explain that one. If you want to come home with it, you might not want to. <laughs> yeah, if I want to come home with, oh, the with head. your head. Yeah, the head it's attached to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do that. So, uh, well, so we got that. So, uh, but uh, this week, Ben Harley, again, in the yeah. space time continuum, it was Labor Day, which I know you labored through uh, the whole time. Yes, yeah. I did, actually. <laughs> <laughs> but I, uh, I actually had a quieter week. So I, I watch stuff, and man, did I watch stuff. So I want to get through this. I'm going yeah, to do my best. Do my best, Ben Harley. I always say I'm going to get through this quick, and then it ends up being a three-hour show. But we're not going to do that. <laughs> I'm going to try my ass off. Uh, <sighs> Talk about this all the time. Anyway, all right. Yeah, let's let's just jump right in. First up, uh, let's see, from 2018. Ooh, 2018. Okay. That, uh, man, wait a second. That's right. Starring our friend Ellie Church. Oh, and yeah. produced and co-directed by our friend, Mr. Brian K. Williams. Brian, I did yeah. watch Amazon Hotbox. Mm, how was that? <laughs> Not too bad. Here's the thing. It took me a little while to understand what was going on. I'm kind of getting into this movie. I'm like, who are a couple of these characters? Okay, well, the director of this film yeah. uh, did that Frankenstein created bikers. Okay. And did something else. A couple of those movies you've probably seen around online and stuff. I think Ellie was in Frankenstein creates created bikers as well. And I think there's there's a character, like kind of a big kind of biker, scruffy kind of guy that is a thread through all of this guy's movies. Okay. okay. And yeah. he's in it. Now I haven't seen the other films. It would be kind of like remember when we watched the Feast movies? Did we watch all those? 
Um, yeah. Yes, okay, so you remember three like, them, right? yes, yeah. there is three of them, and they had like the happy ending. Yeah, they had like the the midget wrestler and the uh, are the tag team. I think yeah. wrestlers and stuff like Brothers. that. So right. So <laughs> basically, it's like I jumped in the middle of all that, wondering what was going on with this character and stuff. But uh, <laughs> right yeah. again, it's filmed really good. It looks really good, and it is a takeoff of the old. Uh, yeah, the old women in prison exploitation movies, most of most of which were shot in the Philippines. Oh, wow. uh, so I okay. think this is <laughs> yeah. kind of an homage to those films. But uh, again, the standout of this film is Ellie Church as a as a sadistic, you know, warden <laughs> dressed up like yeah. a German with a German accent and stuff. And uh, oh yeah, she's convincing. She's good. She's a good actress. And and so and Brian has some. Brian is, Brian is in it, but he's like a, an extra almost as a, one of the, the guards. He's fodder you know, okay, for yeah, something. Yeah, yeah but um, yeah, you know, it's done really well. I still like how they shoot these movies. Oh, yeah. You know, they I don't I don't want to put them like the best way and the most like simplistic way I can put it is they they just they look like movies. Okay. I, does it make yeah. sense? They look like oh, movies. Yeah. And it's one of the hardest things for an independent filmmaker to do is to actually get their movie <laughs> to look like a movie. Movie, right. Yeah, yeah. you know, it's like <laughs> I remember in the hack movies when when uh, Kevin Strange would be upset because stuff was shot on video. You know, it was shot yeah. on basically almost like, you know, Super 8 or VHS video. And people were upset. And he's like, I, what, what difference does it make? It's a story. It's like, well, <laughs> it makes a difference. Yep. And Brian Williams. Yeah. Figured out he didn't want to hear that horse shit, <laughs> you know. So, but uh, not bad though. It was fun to watch. Fun to watch. And if you like naked ladies, you know, you know, you've come to a, a right safe place, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, with right. that. So, but um, <laughs> right, right, pretty cool though. Not too bad. Not too bad. Amazon, yeah. Amazon hot box, definitely wait, uh, worth picking up at a show or ordering online or something like that. If you're into those, uh, the original exploitation movies, you know, the old. The old woman in prison down in some skanky <laughs> South American jail. Um, Against their will. Right, right. So, uh, and they do. I think the last movie Brian did was that Space Babes and From Outer Space. And that was a yeah. homage to uh, like USA Up All Night, like Rhonda Shear yeah. and stuff like that. So, this is more of a little bit of a sleazier kind of uh, uh, homage, like, I guess, a genre of film. Genre? Yeah, okay. yeah, homage. Sure. But uh, uh, I do confess the guy, the biker guy, that the character, the thread through all the films, Yeah, you know, I, I do confess, I don't think he's like a great actor, but he's a very, um, he's got some magnetism. He's a, he's a, uh, he seems like a, a pleasant guy, a nice guy. So you kind of yeah. root for him a little bit. You know, <laughs> okay. yeah, yeah. So, um, but anyway, so not too bad, not too bad. Pick that one Good. up at Horror Round, and uh, again, glad I did. And congrats to Brian and Ellie again for another one in the can, another one in nice. the can. So I know Ellie. Shit, Ellie's been busy too. She's been getting hired to do a lot of stuff. So good for her. That's good. And good yeah, for Brian. Awesome. I know their move yeah. down to Atlanta has gone well for them. I asked them at Horror Round. It's going very well, very well. So congrats good and them. good luck yeah. to them. All right, moving along. As I mentioned, I watched the nineteen. 19- 60s version of The Haunting, so I went back and watched the 1909 version of The Haunting, directed by yeah. Jean de Bont and starring okay. Liam Neeson yeah. and uh, Catherine Zeta-Jones, Lily Taylor. Um, yeah, truly awful. This movie hasn't like healed itself in my collection while it's been there. No, uh-uh. no, it hasn't got, it hasn't <laughs> it's made itself any that. better. Yeah, no, it's, <laughs> no, what an awful movie. Just yeah, awful, I awful. It. I it's boring, it, yeah. bad CG. It's convoluted with a ridiculous script. Just terrible. Yeah. God, it's getting worse. It's getting worse. <laughs> Mr. It's terrible. Uh, uh, speaking of terrible from 1989, <laughs> watched one of my <laughs> watched one of my brand new shiny Blu-rays I got from Horror Hound uh, yeah. from Severn. I got uh, okay. Shocking Dark. Shocking Dark. Okay. Which I do believe the Italian title for was Terminator Two. <laughs> yeah, the, okay. the Italian yeah. title. <laughs> this film was never released in the United States. I believe this is the first time that okay. this was available all right. at all in the United States. Uh, oh boy, everything. Good one, huh? Well, everything there you want, except for cohesion. Something good. <laughs> yeah, like all the elements are in place. It just doesn't <laughs> fall into place real good for you, but. Uh, this movie's not known as a cinematic masterpiece. Uh, you watch no. this for the cheesiness of it and silliness. But okay, uh, okay. 
Uh, kind of reminds me of a cross between a bad alien ripoff and humanoids from the deep a little bit. Oh, I know that sounds oh. good, but be careful about it. Right? Yeah, but be careful. be careful what you wish for. Yeah, right? you're <laughs> treading on some pretty spooky waters here. So you need to be careful. <laughs> yeah. All right. So anyway, Shocking uh, Dark. Uh, it was goofy and silly. It did have my friend Jaretta and a Jaretta Jaretta from uh, Demons. Oh, did it? Yeah, okay. yeah. African American lady who uh, just oh, yeah. needed a back rub from Tim O at Cinema Wasteland. <laughs> and when the first one wasn't good enough, the second one was better. So it was uh, better, huh? Did yeah, a little flirting okay. with your buddy here. Did a little flirting. <laughs> I'm okay with that. I'm okay. How could she help herself, Tim O? I'm I mean, not really on. sure. I'm not really sure. But um, yeah, yeah geez. Give the lady a break. <laughs> well, I gave her a back rub. Good enough. All right. <laughs> Moving it. on. All right. Uh, from 2007. 2007. Oh, oh, moving watch, back up again. Right. Yeah, watch the Poughkeepsie tapes. <laughs> the what? The Poughkeepsie tapes. Okay. This Poughkeepsie is New York. Yes. This is a uh, oh, an older, obviously from uh, 2000 and what was it four? I guess or whatever. Uh, a found footage movie. Okay. Post Blair Witch, but this was before they started making them every five minutes. Um, sure. All right, yeah. But a serial killer in Poughkeepsie. And uh, he uh, videotapes all of his nefarious doings and gives them to and the cops and them. stuff. Oh, and, uh, boy. Not too bad. You know, I've seen this before. Um, kind of a legendary film. I do believe MGM bought the rights from the guys that made it. And uh, they went on. Shelled it. Well, yeah. Yeah, they did. Actually, they shelved wow. it on them, like, right at the very last minute. And these people went on to do... Um, Quarantine, quarantine, quarantine. Oh, they, so they went from this to quarantine. So although they were upset that this movie was shelved before release, they were already working on quarantine and had gotten a gig because of Poughkeepsie tape. So it's oh, okay. too bad for a found footage movie. It's not it's not found footage as much as it's little found video VCR tape. So it's a fake documentary more than anything else. Right. So, OK, not too bad. Not too bad. Um, not too bad. Yeah. Let's see here. Say it. Poughkeepsie. 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 <laughs> that Poughkeepsie yeah. tapes. All right. Yeah. Moving on. It's Ben Harley uh, okay, from yeah. 1957. Oh, boy. watch now the movie. Going now, I do believe. Now I, now you're going well, I do believe we, we reviewed this. Hopefully we did, because if not, I'm not going to have to go back and watch it again. But uh, <laughs> right. from hell it came. Oh, the okay. tree monster movie. Did we do this one? Yeah. I, you know, I think we did. OK, I yeah, the black, so. black and That's white. Okay. With yeah. the natives, uh, the L.A. based uh, natives, natives yeah. yeah, with bro cream and uh, really well groomed natives. Uh, this right. movie's hilarious. I love watching this movie. So me and Angie have just pulled it out and watched it and had a had a ball watching it. Man, it's watching fun. it. Yeah, God, it's fun, <laughs> man. Oh my God, so good times watching that. Let's see here, Mister Ben Harley from two thousand six. Yeah. Uh, co-starring my doppelganger and our late. Late friend, uh, Mr. Dave Brocky. Yeah, say you saw something with Dave Brocky? It was called American Hardcore. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah, it was a uh, documentary uh, just about American hardcore bands and how they came up in the early 80s and they networked and stuff. I've seen this before because I remember being very bummed that Ultraman yeah. wasn't mentioned. And I'm no, not being, yeah. I'm not being like, my band, it's not my band. No. I play in Ultraman, okay? This, right. and, and my work would not have been the result of why it would be mentioned. But what they did, what bothered me a little bit, and I shouldn't get bothered by this, but they had a moment where they were trying to explain how these bands toured, right? Yeah. They said, there's a band in every town. Reno, Nevada was was seven seconds. Indianapolis, sloppy seconds. You know, and they so they started doing like a pin, a pin thing around the country, an animated yeah. thing. They never hit St. Louis. I'm like, ah, oh, damn it. Wait a second. Yeah, what the hell's wrong with that? Because that was Ultraman. Now, Ultraman yeah. wasn't as like famous, I guess, or as in the punk world as some of these other bands, but they were the St. Louis band. Yeah, well, I told you, I knew of Ultraman. I yeah. Of them, yeah, know, so and, I got a little bump. I'm in little old Toledo, Ohio. Yeah, well, I, I got a little, got a little bump. Well, but I, the actual documentary itself was uh, heartwarming. Yeah, it was good. Yeah, I'm getting old, Mr. Ben Harley. When I use words like heartwarming, watching heartwarming, yeah. <laughs> documentaries about my youth. But in fairness, yes. though, also yeah. Ultraman was like the second wave of hardcore. So okay. it was more like an 85 thing. Some of these bands start around 80 and Ultraman started around 85. So that's considered okay. a second wave. Uh, but basically what the bands in town would do would, would, would house and facilitate the bands on the road. 
So yeah. they would set the gig up. They would headline and let the touring band open or vice versa. And then they would put them up and send them on their way to the next town. So um, okay. that's how it works. That's how DIY touring works. It's as simple as that. Yeah. So just, yeah. So do they talk some Guar stuff on there, Timmer? You know, stuff? they didn't talk too much about Guar. Brocky, I yeah. think, was talking more about it. Like uh, one of his punk bands he was in. So I don't oh, think okay. yeah, it wasn't just Guar. He was talking about other stuff. But uh, yeah. But anyway, so it was a good time. Good watching that. Uh, see, so yeah, moving on. From 1978, watch the movie uh, Coma. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. directed yeah. by Michael Crichton, starring Michael Douglas, Ooh. Richard Widmark. Yeah. Little Ed Harris. Ed moment. Harris. Yeah, Ed Harris wow. has like a little early uh, little role, a little, uh, little bit role in that thing, too. Role, and yeah. I can't okay. ever pronounce the lead actress's name is Genevieve Buhold or something like that. She's in a, she's in a bunch of ton of films. I think she's in yeah. dead, dead ringers, which we need to get to at some point Sure, uh, okay. here to do, but uh, pretty good. Angie wanted to see something more like a mystery. I said, I got something for you. It's a little older, a little bit, but yeah. it's a good, <laughs> good little murder mystery in a hospital in a yeah. hospital. And to be quite frank with you, it was a, uh, almost an update of one of our official films this week. Yeah, a little bit. It, it really was because we watched them back to back. Yeah, not on purpose. We just happened to watch them back to back. I'm like, <laughs> right, right. holy crap! This is just a, this is like almost the same movie, a little more Pretty quaint similar. than the little other one. one. Yeah. So, but uh, yeah. All right, moving on. It's been hard. Moving on. Yes, From 1979, yeah, yeah. Monty Python's The Life of Brian. <laughs> yes. <sir. laughs> I'm oh, Brian, boy. and so is my wife. So, I, enjoyed <laughs> I love that movie. I love oh, that. Yeah. That and the Holy Grail. That and the Holy yeah, Grail. Love. And I love yeah, picking yeah. out like Terry Gilliam, and uh, you know, because he's he's the like the 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 ogre or the little troll guy. And all. oh yeah, he, he's my favorite Patsy. Remember, he's Patsy from the Holy Grail. So, but yeah, uh, yeah. good movie, very good movie. And I will never laugh, laugh, Mister Ben Harley. I know you have a friend that comes in there to help you print. Yeah. I will never laugh at your friend Biggest Dickus. <laughs> I won't laugh yeah. at Biggest Dickus. I don't want to be struck by a centurion. So great no, movie. Sir. Great movie. Yeah. Uh, here's something interesting. Uh, let's see. No, Another good. one from 1979, Mr. Ben Harley. Went on a 79. Yeah, it's a fine a year. It is a fine, fine year. year. I like so. It's a prophecy year. I mean, prophecy yeah. Year. I mean, that, um, the year I found out about the Ramones. Mm. Back in well, um, <laughs> we brought, we took chance and took a chance. So uh, over the long weekend, uh, we gave Chance uh, a little bit of a a choice of what he would want to watch with me and Angio. We picked out the original Mad Max. Really? Yeah. He's a little young for that, but you know what's funny? How you go back and you see this movie and you realize, God, this was maybe, it's still an R, but not quite as like from what we've had from then to now in cinema, you know, it's much more digestible at the same time i don't think mad max has lost hardly any of his impact no uh-uh. you know at all so i think he i was, love that movie i yeah, do too it's... i do too i think he didn't gravitate toward it quite as much as he did the road warrior when he saw it, but for the obvious reasons that mad max is much more an adult film sure um, yeah. and even with the pacing there's a lot of cool car and motorcycle chases and stuff of course yeah. Uh, and those he got into. I think he dug those. So I think at, toward the end, he really got into it. Once stuff got serious. Once things <laughs> yeah. were getting tough, then he was <laughs> getting into it. it, it yeah. It, yeah, it got serious. <laughs> right. Real um, quick, didn't it? Yeah. yeah but uh, really, really cool to go back and watch that. That movie definitely. It's a different movie. It's just different. The yeah. The feel of it, you know, it's definitely Australian, right? You know? Right. <laughs> it right. feels like it. It's a good, though. Right, uh, you know, I I enjoy that movie. I watched it not too long ago. Um, oh yeah, it's great. Yeah, got to go really back good. and watch it every now and then. So uh, yeah, yeah. Let's see here. Moving on, Miss Ben Harley from 1980. Sure. Watched Ooh, uh, okay. another Italian produced film. This one directed by Ruggiero Diodato oh, and uh, oh, Cannibal Holocaust fame, and, ah, uh, nice. right. starring Mr. David Hess from Last House on the Left. And also Swamp Thing. He was a jerky McJerkington in Swamp jerky Thing. Mc- yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we watched House on the Edge of the Park. House on the Edge of the Park. Yeah, okay. which is an unofficial Italian pseudo sequel to Last House on the Left. Hence David Hess playing a basically a, a home invasion guy. This is okay. an odd film, though, because only like one or two people die in the whole film. 
Oh, really? Yeah, okay. there's less deaths in this movie than there is the final terror. <laughs> and final it's a terror. DVD Bob special, but we're going to have to have a chat with DVD Bob because <laughs> about that, no. on, the, on the back of the box, it says an incredibly huge body count. There's not even a huge character list in this film. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, where's the body count at? There's no body count at all. It does have a twist. It takes a little while to get there, but it's a little okay. odd. It's kind of odd. It's definitely Italian. Definitely Italian. Yeah, it's Italian. So and like, like Timo always told me, just go with it. I, I went with it. I saw lots of boobies and Ooh, nasty man. things and stuff. But uh, anyway, moving on. I'm from, moving ni- on. <laughs> from 1998, um, watch the movie Phantoms. Phantoms. Okay. Phantoms. This is uh, Ben Affleck. Rose McGowan, Liv Shriver, uh, Liv yeah. Schreiber, um, and Peter O'Toole. Peter O'Toole? Yes. That yeah. I don't know if you've seen this or not, but this was a movie. Yeah, I, I, it, it's vaguely familiar. It's but. kind of a cross between The Thing and um, like a like a Lovecraft type story. There's, okay. a, there's a deserted town and nobody knows where everybody went. And there's like a, a creature underground a giant creature underground that's tentacles okay. come up and, and get you and stuff like that. It's, you know, it's, it's a fun popcorn monster movie. It's okay. what it is. Dean Arcoons wrote the book and wrote the screenplay, not a Dean Arcoons fan at all. This is one of his better. And by better, I mean, it's kind of fun to watch. That's true. Okay. Movies or whatever. But, uh, I like to go back to this one every now and then and see it. And check it out. Yeah, yeah. Check it out too. And see if like, uh, if the entire cast is walking bow legged, <laughs> thanks to it's a Miramax film. Yeah. And I heard those execs at Miramax had a big old casting couch. You ever hear this in the news? Mm, Have you heard I about this I, in the news? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Some guy, Weinstein. Yeah. Something. Rose McGowan in it. Mm. Yeah. My wonder. Ben Affleck now, is this, walking yeah. around kind of funny. <laughs> now, Peter O'Toole. The, mm. well, he is handsome. He is handsome. Yeah. You're right. You can't, yeah. you cannot deny Peter O'Toole. Well, this was the movie that got kind of bummed me out because he looks so old in it. So I got is a little bummed out. Is this where they, like, they attach to your face and drill into your head or something? Um, there's or a moment where that happens. It's Yeah, yeah. there is. a it's, it's phantoms. So they have what yeah. they call like little drones of... Oh, I don't know. Like if a person, if a character dies, this creature can make the character come back as one of its yeah. minions. Yeah, and stuff. Yeah. And it takes yep. over the, yeah. basically the whole town. So it's got a little bit of the blob. It's yeah, like a cross Lewis between Shriver's the thing and the blob. Good, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So, but uh, okay. kind of fun yeah, to watch. I've seen it. I've seen it. Okay. Yeah. yeah kind yeah. of fun to watch. So not too bad. Oh, let's see here, Mr. Oh, my God. Did I go on a freak out? Oh! Did you want to freak out? I went, I, on a, freak out? I went on a nuclear holocaust freak out. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. So I started, not exa- I was not trying to get depressed, Mr. Ben. <laughs> uh, but. Or yeah. worried about my friends and family in the world, on the earth, you know. <laughs> yes. But I uh, started off with uh, Testament, okay. a movie that I believe was made for PBS, but then when the execs saw it, they ended up uh, putting it out theatrically. And uh, Jane Alexander is a star of it, and she actually was up for an Academy Award nom- or an Academy Award for this film. Really? Uh, thanks. It's from 1983, called Testament. Um, small roles for Kevin Costner and uh, Rebecca De Mornay in it too. Rebecca. Mm. Yeah. That's so uh, I don't know if you remember this one or not. This is not a destruction movie as much as this is a uh, fabric of society falling apart. Okay. So they live in Northern California, and I do believe that I think San Francisco had been attacked, and that's William Devane plays Jane Alexander's husband. He's only in like the first fifteen minutes. He's got business okay. in San Francisco, so this is where it starts. Okay, and, then, and so San Francisco gets bombed and everything, and um, he never makes it back. So basically, oh. what's happening to them is that they get some radiation sickness, and really just the town falls apart. Because all the okay. communications broke down, stuff still depressing enough, still depressing <laughs> enough. So, but uh, and yeah, if you want to so. talk about depressing, Mister Ben Harley from 1984, oh, oh dear God, oh, I God, went and God. watched the British film Threads. Ooh, okay. Have you seen Threads? Mm, I don't think so. Ben. I don't think your psyche could handle Threads. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I want. Yeah. Uh, th- oh, I man. saw Threads. So let's come out in '84. I probably saw it. I might have been 10 or 11 years old when I saw Threads, and oh, wow. uh, okay. 
I'd rather let my kids watch Cannibal Holocaust and let them oh, watch wow. Threads. Yeah. Really? It okay. does not pull any punches. The first half of the movie, you're following these Brits. Now, remember, this is made for t- British television, 1984. Yeah. Little grainy. So already, you're looking at a cloudy, devoid of color... You know, British, <laughs> yeah. yay, we're in Britain. <laughs> Shit, you know, no offense, Britain. Look, Brits, I, you got, I love you guys, I really do. But it's, I was over there one time, and <laughs> it was sort of stereotypical. Let's put it that way. So you need to learn uh, to loosen up, have some fun over there. Is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. You know, <laughs> paint something yellow for God's sake. Do something. You know. So anyway, <laughs> open a window. I don't know. But anyway, so uh, yeah. Oh, God, Mr. Ben Harley, this is just not tough. Oh. Yeah, Threads is, like, tough. I got it. I think Severn put it out on Blu-ray. No reason to have it on Blu-ray. No offense, Severn. I mean, I'm, you, you guys put it out. It's great. You're yeah. not going to make the picture look much better. Again, this is 84 made for British television. Sure, this yeah, is not okay. pull one goddamn punch. Starts off, you follow a woman, young couple, basically, and news yeah. reports. It's almost a pseudo-docudrama. Okay. You, know, you watch a movie where it's a little bit of documentary, but a lot of acting. Yeah. Kind of, that's kind of like what this movie is, and it follows a, a young British couple. They're getting married because she's pregnant, and of course, when uh, the bombs go off, the husband never make or the yeah husband or fiance never, never makes it back, and the woman has to negotiate her way through a nuclear barren Holocaust wasteland, pregnant, oh, and uh, whoa, whoa. yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyway, yeah. I watched it. Wee hoo 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 hoo. I'm going to have to watch that, the day yeah. after to cheer up. <laughs> I guess so. Uh, and Jeez. I'm going to watch the day after. But it's coming out in Blu-ray. Come out soon. So. Oh, yeah. I got a DVD of it. Yeah, okay. I got it. I got it. But it's yeah. coming out in Blu-ray. So I'm going to wait to watch it on Blu-ray. But phew, what a freak out, Mr. Ben Harley. Uh, yeah. Last up, Mr. Ben Harley. I tried my best. Right I rolled me. through it. Last up. Oh, you did good, buddy. You did great. On Amazon Prime, a documentary called VHS Lives, a schlockumentary. Yes. A schlockumentary, it's called. Yes, VHS okay. Lives. Um, it's okay. I still have a little bit of a thing with these. I'm, I'm, I'm picking up on some things here, Mr. Ben Harley. I don't want to insult <laughs> people here. Now, I couldn't wait for the VHS uh, format to go away. Many yeah. different reasons. Blurry picture, hissy sound. That's my big joke. I sell yep. VHSs if we set up at a show, and I have a box. It says, attention, fans of blurry picture and hissy sound. Might I introduce to you VHS? Buy some of my old VHS. I don't want them. And I don't like the Get them while they're hot. <laughs> yeah. And I don't, uh, let's see, no, let's see. We, we, oh, we, the full frame. That's always fun. Full frame. So we yeah. got half the picture uh, cropped uh-huh. off and everything. And the tapes get all wrinkled and bent and broken. And you don't put them on a stereo speaker. Don't do that Mm-mm. because there's magnets Mm-mm. in there and they'll erase them. There's a lot of downfalls <laughs> of VHS, okay? Yes, there is. The yeah. only cool thing about VHS was that it was basically the first chance besides a, yeah. so besides like a 16 or 8 millimeter projector or something like that. The first chance you could take a movie home. Yeah. I watched it on yeah. your own. That, that was cool. And it was something. It was that something. Really I was agree. Something. Oh, I agree. Man. But I like the idea of it, not necessarily the format. Okay. No. All right. No. I um, see you there, brother. So now these people, it seems like some of them don't even watch these things. They like the cover art and they like mm-hmm. to collect them. Okay. Talk about it, yeah. Let's be let's be more clear then when you're telling me you love VHS. If you love VHS, <laughs> Because you're collecting them like a rock collection. Yeah. You know, or a horse and buggy collection for buggies, you know. All right. That's cool. I feel you. I feel you, you know. But uh, if you're doing this because you're, I I can't stand DVD and Blu-ray. Well, yeah. And somebody else really, like, kind of bothered me a little bit. Said, well, it's analog. Oh, so are cassette tapes, man. Yeah. Analog. There's a difference between like recording analog on like two inch tape and then mass distributing right, right. things on little bitty tapes and stuff like that. There's a big difference. You have to really understand. Don't throw the analog. You know, I'm going to say, well, I like to listen to my stuff on reel to reel. That's why I buy myself a cassette tape. <laughs> Technically, it is a reel to reel and so is a VHS. 
But I digress and say I just don't understand. I could not wait for that format to go away. The only points that people have is that some of the stuff that was put on a VHS is not going to be put on DVD. Or Blue Ray. And I sort of agree with that. But, I mean, it's it's hard for me to agree with that. When a guy that collects Mm -hmm. DVDs and Blu-rays who pretty much has about everything except maybe a regional little movie that you don't want to see in any other format. (laughs) And then you need to rip that to a DVD because folks VHS tapes disintegrate. They go away. They die. Yeah. You know, so do DVDs and Blu-rays. But again, if you make a dupe of a DVD or a Blu-ray, you don't lose any quality. You do on analog. So anyway, so yeah, but uh, it's, no, it's, I feel yeah, you, buddy. Yeah. Some of them guys are just being nerdy about it, you know. And I've watched a couple of those ones, you know, and they're just like, and some of those guys do. They'll, they'll go and they'll find stuff like at uh, uh, Goodwill or uh, Savers or something, you know, and mm-hmm. they'll come home and watch it. And it'll be like Jonathan Winters does aerobics or something, you know. <laughs> Don't so, see and, that one. And I like Jonathan Winters. I do too. I, I don't, don't like aerobics. Ever, yeah, I don't know that he ever did aerobics. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? They're they're yeah. doing their and they'll sit and watch them and stuff and then commentate on them or what have you. But right. um as far as quality and stuff, oh, it just always annoyed me. I'm you know, I was forever fiddling with the tracking. Yes. And and my thing is I took, you know, pretty decent care of them, but it, you could, you know, you, unless you had like I don't know. Unless you put them in some kind of pressurized, you know, yeah. tank or something, they're going to disintegrate anyhow. You yeah. Know what I mean, right. And then I, it's funny, I have some of my dad's old VHS tapes that he had up at the lake. And you look at like the front cover and it's like, Kind of, uh, I don't know. It's pretty much sun bleach. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> like you turn around the back cover and it looks nice, you know, right. because he had them sitting out and on a shelf and stuff like that. You know what I mean? So right. it's like they're they're, or you find these ones like my dad did, and some of these other. I don't call my dad a goober because he's older, and I'll give it to him. <laughs> but anybody, and I used to hate that, especially with albums and stuff. So why do you have to put? your name on the album, man. I'm not stealing your album. You know what I mean? The right. guys would do that. They put their name on, you put it right on the front cover of the album. Oh, Kurt, crying out loud. You know, so <laughs> you see that with uh, DVDs too a lot, but I can see why some of these guys want to collect them. Yeah. For the art. Like I, there's a couple that I have that I got from you only because I'd never seen them for like day of the Triffids and stuff. Right. And, and, uh, um, war of the gargantuans, which I mean, come on, I'd love to have that just because, you right. know, so, right. but other than that, I'm not going to, yeah, I'm not, going backwards like that it's too much well it seems like there's like four different types of people there's the people who they they like the artwork like we're talking about yeah they like the artwork and then there's the people i could dig that yeah Mm -hmm. yeah and then there's the people i think that uh again just collect them just to just to collect them because they're going on they're going away they're rare i'm losing track of how many kinds of people there's these kind of people so you kind of got the artwork people then you got the people that just like the rarity of them. Oh, and they also yeah. like to watch the weird Jonathan Winters does aerobic stuff. So I now that I understand. That I totally well, get hey, and I understand. Love Jonathan Winters. Well, yeah. I understand <laughs> wanting to watch something bizarre and weird just just for the hell of it. Nobody else has this. You know, I get that. Yeah, yeah. Um and then the, but then there's the people like me who just who collected the shit out of them because that was the only format you had. And as soon as the format changed, we were gleefully yeah. getting rid of our VHSs. Now yes. luckily I didn't throw all of my VHSs away, but <laughs> yep. enough to make me upset that I could have sold some of them. You know, I mean, sure. like those VHSs are worth a lot of money to somebody. And yeah. remember for a while I was selling them for basically eBay prices. And then once I started getting ripped off, I was like, yeah. fuck you people. I'm selling these things for five bucks. Yep. You yep. People, I'm not getting involved in this VHS yeah. trade. You know, come on, get out of it. You know, so, but yeah. anyway. Not a bad little documentary, so it's just, I'm not making fun of people who do it. I just don't. I understand the collecting of it. What I don't understand is that people are like, I just love watching stuff on VHS. I don't see why. Don't. Not in like, you know what? I'll take this back. If you have an old tube TV, I totally get it because yeah. actually VHS looked better. It looked a lot better on the old 260 frame, you know, lines of definition. Sure. The old tube. Yeah. Uh, below standard definition, basically below 480. Before it was a, there was digital TV, you know. Yeah. I think it looked great on that because it was formatted for it, so it was a little bit better. I mean, it looked a little bit better. If you put a VHS in a modern television, 
So it's talk about blurry. Wow. TV's trying to compensate for it to up convert yeah, it yeah. and it makes it just, just a big blur. So, but uh, sure. not a yeah. bad doc though. And you know, like I said, I, I get it folks, except for people who just want to watch it. I, I don't understand it. I, you can still be my friend. I'm not going to like kick you in the balls and unfriend <laughs> you on Facebook. You know, you didn't vote for Geraldine that. Ferraro or anything. You're fine in my yeah. book, you know, <laughs> but anyway, so uh, what you got, Mr. Ben Hurley? Oh, I don't know, Tim. Well, let me see here, buddy. Let me reach into my bag. I know here. it's been a busy week and I know we got movies here to review, but see, you got to have a little something there, right? I got a little bit. Of something All right. Here, Tim. Let me find a little bit of something that I can talk about my friend. Yes, sir. All right, Tim, you know, um, here lately, uh, Sydney and I have been watching a little bit more television and things together. I'm trying to get her to watch a few things. She's really kind of into sharks right now, but I'm not going, you know, we're not watching Jaws or anything like that right, right. now, you know what I mean? Or, which was kind of funny. It happened to be on last night, but I'm like, no, 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 we're going to save she it. She just saw the shark picture and yeah. she got excited, you know what I mean? Right. And I've got her a couple stuffed sharks, and actually the other day, uh, shark week, I bought, uh, they had shark week had some little shark toys, you know, for the bathtub or whatever. So uh-huh. got her some of those, but uh, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not really going down that road quite yet, but we have enjoyed watching some things together. Um, she, uh, I put on the wizard of Oz. I think we talked about this mm-hmm. recently. Uh, and she just, you know, she was fascinated by the whole tornado scene. You oh know, yeah. It's awesome. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, and I still think to this day, it's, probably one of the greatest pieces of cinema ever. I mean, it looks so good. You know what I mean? It, it actually, I've not seen real tornadoes that look less impressive. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. And like, it's, it just looks really cool. And I like that scene, but so she was really into it. But, you know, with her attention span, which is worse than mine, right, right. <laughs> especially at her age, right. uh, it's hard to keep her, you know, uh, into it. So we went back and revisited uh, Wizard of Oz the other day. And what I kind of did was I would... Um, I started off, you know, because we'd reached to where they got to Emerald City and things like that. And I thought she'd kind of like to see the, you know, the different colored horses and things, you know, when it changes. But she's losing interest. So I fast forward real quick <laughs> and got to the actual Wizard of Oz, you know, when they go into his throne room or whatever. And, uh, man, that kid was just just blown away. Like, and it was fun watching it through her eyes, kind of like. Mm-hmm. I mean, she was just like, I, you know, it's kind of scared at first. I thought, is she going to go into a, 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 a epileptic fit? Because she was like, oh my God, <laughs> you know, it's too much going on, you know? Uh-huh. And I was, but she, she just really enjoyed it, you know? So then we, what we did, I kind of fast forward to the haunted forest, you know, part and, you know, the, the flying monkeys and things. But we just had a really good time watching it. And, and, I, it's funny because when I always go back and watch it now, my, I think it was my great grandma, uh, used to watch, you know, when it, you know, Tim, cause we're old, right? Oh, remember? Mm. Cause when it used to be on once a year. Oh yeah. Yeah. I remember that. <laughs> she yeah. used to fall asleep. I do believe it was, she'd fall asleep at a different point every year. So she always thought it had a different ending. <laughs> now <laughs> in my case. <clears throat> watching it, it that was a real downbeat short. ending yeah. man that witch yeah, just got the exactly. house jump thrown on her and the end what the yeah, hell the yeah end. right exactly yeah. <laughs> right. yeah uh and dorothy never made it out of the throne room man. <laughs> right, and, uh right. you know but um it, it's funny every time i watch it now as i've gotten older it gets shorter to me it's like yeah. that movie you know to me was like this humongous you know and it is it still is you know but when i when i watch it now it's just, it's not as grandiose. I, I, you know, mostly because I know things more behind the scenes. I see the sets, you know, and, which I enjoy. I'm cool with. Right. But, um, yeah, watching it with her was a lot more fun, watching it through her eyes a little bit, you know. Now we did fast forward through a couple of things, not a lot, you know, mm-hmm. but, uh, she really did enjoy it, like, you know, um, and I just think it's just a, it is a great movie. It still is. I still think it's one of the best movies ever. I really yeah. do enjoy it, and I still like The Wicked Witch. I think she kicks ass. <laughs> do you ask her out? <laughs> why? Yeah, I don't know why you had to throw water on her. What'd she do to you? Man? <laughs> you scared a little fire? Come on. Man. So, uh, but, uh, you know, I'm, I don't, I, I, I miss her beautiful wickedness, Tim. I do. I miss her beautiful wickedness. I got you. So, yeah, but no, I, I, it, a lot of fun to watch, my friend. A lot, a lot of fun to watch. So, um, I think that's, no, actually, one more thing, Tim, real okay. quick. I did give Trailer Park Shark another shot. Oh. And I did. Uh, not as bad as I quite remember, but not as good as it should have been. Um, you know, did it mean? deserve I, another up at bat? 
<laughs> I mean, uh, well, you know what's kind of funny is I I, <laughs> I thought I deleted it and I went back to my my DVR and I was like, huh, I didn't finish Trailer Park Shark. Well, you know what? I'm gonna start it over a little bit. And actually, like the first little bit of it was pretty good. And then uh, I don't know, Timo. Now. I'm not going to get into it too much about a movie called Trailer Park Shark. <laughs> I'm not going to get into too much of scale and stuff like that right. because going into it, they don't care. Right. They don't care. But it's a big, great white. I'll tell you that way. You know, it's very agile, too. Uh, okay. <laughs> but I will say this this shark's huge, right? It's huge. But they're able to snare it, like, once again, like in a Wiley Coyote-type trap from a tree, right? They have okay. a... Well, probably about a 3,500 pound shark hanging from a branch from a tree. <laughs> now, I'm not the smartest guy in the world, but that'd be a, has to be a hell of a tree. Yeah. First of all, I'd pull that tree right out of its roots, much less the branch. But then again, it's trailer park shark, my it's friend. It's a trailer so, park shark. You're right. Yeah. I'm going to say that I'm hoping for trailer park shark too. Oh. But there must be some more uh, trailer park honeys if you know what i, mean. I do and, know what you mean uh, and i don't care if they're missing a tooth or two i know you don't but we no. need some more trailer park and i'm talking <laughs> with you know voluptuous yes. i know there's a lot of crackhead trailer park sharks in this one you want women who took their old drapes and, <laughs> and, and old tablecloths and fashioned that's them right. into crude clothings right that's what i want exactly I that's what you're giving to me so yes so trailer park shark part two if you're listening, that's what we got for you. That's Woo. what we're hoping. Oh, real fast. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, she made an appearance in it. Uh, she looked like a crackhead. Sorry. But at one, uh, I was like, is that Tara Reed? Oh, I'm like, it looks like Tara Reed. And then they kind of go through and they go, uh, you know, there's a shark out here. You better look out for yourself. And she says, shark. The the weatherman said nothing about tornadoes. Uh. I said, yeah, there she is. That's her. That's her. So you're watching a, at least a pseudo asylum film then. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I'll tell you what, though. I'll take Trailer Park Shark over Sharknado. Okay. All right. <laughs> uh, that's bad. <laughs> sure. I don't know. I just, if, uh, yeah. Um, that's the last thing I'm worried about in Trailer Park is a shark. Maybe Tara Reid I'm worried about in a trailer park, but not that. So, mm, but uh, She fit right <laughs> in. I'm sure she did. So, uh, <laughs> moving on. All right, is that all yes. you got, Mr. Ben Harley? That's all I got, my friend. All right. That's all I can take. All, all right, let's get, let's get to our official little films. We'll go okay, in chronological man. order again here. Uh, <laughs> Sounds good, man. From 1935. 35. All right. Now, this week, this week has a fine distinction, Mr. Ben Harley. This week yeah. is Timo hasn't seen either of these movies week. What? Yeah, I've never seen. I haven't seen either one of these. Really? Movies. No, I haven't. Nope. Hmm. Yeah. So first up from 1935. That seems strange. It is. It seems a little odd to me too. I was just checking a lot of things, making sure that you know <laughs> wasn't like. Did Angie check your temperature? Ah, uh, well, she did, and it's painful <laughs> when she does that though. She's, <laughs> she's old school, you know. So yeah. I don't like that. Well, you guys but, are living out in the country. That's now, true. So. That's true. <laughs> uh, so we got the crime of Doctor Crespi. Starring yes. one of my favorites, Eric Von Stroheim. Yes, you're a big fan of that. <laughs> I like the Eric Von Stroheim. So let me get you a, get, get out movie guy here and give you a real short uh, plot synopsis here. Here we go. Okay. All right. A crazy scientist invents a serum that induces a catatonic state in whoever it's injected to. He uses a serum to paralyze his enemies so that he can bury them alive. <laughs> That's it. Uh, this That's is it. loosely based off, uh, it's suggested, I guess, by Edgar Allan Poe's yeah. pre Premature Burial. Interestingly enough, so yes, we have Eric von Stroheim, and it, who I love from uh, The Great yes. Gabo and Grand Illusion. and uh, He's a dedicated smoker, I like to report. Yeah, I just oh, want yeah, you guys sure know is. that. And uh, uh, the other person who is in this that you may have recognized was Dwight Fry. Dwight Fry, yes. Dwight Fry, the uh, as my brother called him, the servant to the master. He was Renfield. He was, yeah. Yes, he was Renfield, and uh, I liked Dwight Fry. He was also Fritz, Fritz in Frankenstein yeah. and everything. So he, this was his highest billing in a film, believe it or not, that I'm aware of at least. So, um, but Stroheim, yeah, Stroheim plays. Uh, Oh, he just plays a nutty scientist. Yeah, he wants to what? give. Dr. He wants to give. <laughs> yeah, he wants to give people a. Wants to get people a voodoo shot, bury them alive, 
And then yeah. well, I think he wants to pull them out. He wants to pull yeah. them out of there and then like hold hold sway over them, I guess, in a way. Mm-hmm. Um, again, this is like a precursor to the film Coma, which we had watched yeah. just before. So I was a, I was a little uh, I was a little nervous about doctors. You're having a coma freak out. I had a I had a story about a year or two ago, Mister Ben Harley, about a medical procedure. Yeah, and I was a little nervous about doctors after that. This this week didn't help any at all between coma and the di- and the crime of Doctor Crespi. So I have said, Mister Ben Harley, I have not seen this film before, and I would doubt that you have too. So what'd you think? Yeah, no, Tim, I have not seen this. Um, yeah, Dr. Crispy. Yeah. Dr. Ooh. Crispy. Yeah. Wow. Well, Tim, I'm not going to lie to you. I had to watch this one twice. Oh, boy. Uh, yeah, I watched it last week during my personal Vietnam or over here. Um, <laughs> right. Uh, but, uh, yeah, you know, and I, oh, this is a slow one. It this is. is a slow it's one very creaky. Harley. It's creaky. Yeah. Very, very. Lot, not a lot of talking. No. But, uh, yeah, I had a hard time. So I went back, uh, believe it or not, I went back this morning. When it was nice and quiet, mm. and I and and I watched this again, and I and because there was just like a, a one or two things that I missed, right. I kind of had the gist of it, but you know, um, and and I'm glad I did go back and watch it again because I appreciated Doctor Crispy, Crispy, <laughs> yeah. a Lord. little bit more. Yeah. He came; he's a, definitely a lot more creepy, you know, mm-hmm. uh, and and so because I missed some lines that I was like, okay. No, all right, I get it. Right. Because there was a couple points I'm like, this guy's kooky. Like he's he's actually like sitting at his desk, just like tapping his for like a long time. Yes. Like they show yeah. like yeah. and you can just tell this guy kind of is uh, a little anal, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And creepy. Yeah. Uh, you know what I mean? And so um that that I don't know, I enjoyed his character much more the second time I watched that. Yeah, it was much more geared towards him. And basically kind of what it is is he's in love with a lady. Yeah. He, he, and he told her and what did he say the one time, and which I'm sure the guy just gave her a kiss on the cheek, but he said, You made love to him oh, right yeah. in front of me. And I'm thinking, wait a second, how old is this movie? This movie's <laughs> pretty old, man. Wait. Yeah. Wait, no. And then I'm thinking, no, wait, it had remember, to be. He must have yeah. kissed her on the hand or something. Remember when I told you they, yeah. could, they could kiss her and she could, oh, Dwight, oh. are you making love to me? Love. Oh, <laughs> stop making love to me. <laughs> yeah, right. So I was like, whoa, wait a second. No wonder he's so upset. But right. no, I, I settled down. I, I, there you go. Pull, I pumped the brakes. <laughs> and But yeah, so basically, yeah, he, he really, he was in love with her and uh, like, and his best friend is his best friend's girl, right? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Right? And we've heard that. We know a song about it. We've heard songs about that. Oh, yeah. Too. Yep. Yeah. So, um, what happens is he really, he's still in love with her, and uh, his best friend needs medical attention, mm-hmm. uh, some surgery, and she comes to him, Dr. Crispy, and says, please, Dr. Crispy, please. Right. Please help him. Yes. And, you know, and, and he still even confesses love to her, but she says, She's still not in love with him, but he he says he'll help. Right. And he seems really nice at this point, right, Tim? Oh, yeah. <laughs> he seems yep. really nice. Goes through and does the, the procedure or the uh, uh, the operation mm-hmm. flawlessly and everything, but the guy has a turn for the worse, Tim, all right? Yeah, he does. Yeah. And, and, and Dr. Crispy gets there. Crispy gets his, uh, <laughs> basically, his guinea pig. Right. He gets his revenge and his guinea pig all at the same time, kind of, really. Yeah. He, he injects him with that. The the voodoo, yeah, it's or yeah, it's, it's the old voodoo story. Yeah, it's basically, the, yeah, yeah, it's the old voodoo story. He he makes people he puts he puts the guy into a state where everyone <laughs> thinks he's dead. Yep, and he allows him to be buried and all that kind of stuff, and then yeah. he digs him back up, right? Gets him out. Yeah, not before he he goes and talks to him and tells him what he's going to do to right. him and all that stuff too, which was a really intense scene. Right. Um, the only problem I guess really had to, uh, I I think maybe the first time I watched it is it's uh, hard to see, hard to see, and you have to crank the volume up. I had to, I had to. It's not and a then, great you know, transfer. And yeah, then you have to run back and turn the volume down because people are thinking I'm Doctor Crespi and you're <laughs> murdering people right. at at six thirty in the morning. Right. You know, like what is going on at the screen? Crespi right? is He's, an early riser. He's an early <laughs> yeah, riser. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he sure is. Man. Yeah. So, um, but uh. 
yeah, uh, I liked that scene quite a bit too, and I I enjoyed it a lot more. But it still is very creaky and, yeah. and slow because there's a part where Doctor <laughs> Crespi puts his jacket on, and it's about a two minute scene. I'm well, like, oh, here's the thing: oh, it's oh. yes, it's an interesting story, but it is painfully yes. slow, and I think yes. It's due to like non editing and padding all over the uh, place. Yeah. This movie is probably closer to a half hour, half hours worth of material for a for a compelling story. Yeah. Um to me, Stroheim seems a little strung out on drugs in this one. Kind of odd. Yeah. Kind of like real. He might have got into some of that stuff that right. laying around. But yet, well, yet he carries the film. I mean, yeah. yet he kind of does. He's got an undeniable screen presence. Unfortunately. I think the director and everybody was also dazzled by his, uh, let's call it a deliberate performance. Sure. So like he does everything he does is with, is with some kind of panache, you know, he can't, like you said, put his jacket on. He does it in a certain way. And I think the filmmakers were just blown away by, they had Eric von Stroheim on set (laughs) and they were going to like, they were going to show you, you. Yeah, they were going to (laughs) show every little acting technique that this guy could do. Has, he was yeah. kind of like deliberate by, you know, how I always told you Peter Cushing can make, could hold a beaker and make you believe anything's in a beaker. Oh, yeah. You can do that. Well, Stroheim's yeah. kind of doing the same thing, but it's kind of like Peter Cushing on opiates. Yeah. He's just kind of like sleepwalking mm-hmm. through it. And um, I, I don't know. Like, I, I am an Eric von Stroheim fan. I am a Edgar Allan Poe fan, although this is only. Uh, as I said, suggested by Poe. Yeah. With the yeah. buried alive type stuff and everything. Um, Poe and name only. <laughs> right. But I have to tell you, I, I personally thought, and I love these old movies. I love Eric von Strom, like I say and stuff. I, this one was just too creaky. It was, it's really only to me of interest of someone like, to, in my personal opinion, you might have liked it more. Yeah. It sounds like you liked it more a second time you watched it. But oh, yeah. in my I opinion, did. it's only of interest to a cinephile like myself, you know, someone who really wants Mm -hmm. to see like everything that's come out. And that's the reason why I got it. I'd never heard of it. I like Stroheim and I, it was real cheap on Amazon. I bought it. I'm like, yeah. And I'm like, I'm going to see this. And then, ah, man, I'm like, whoo, Ooh, the grand illusion. This is not not even the great Gabo. The great Gabo was bizarre. He, that was a putt. That was a dummy movie. That was a figure movie, a ventriloquist okay. movie with All some right. really okay. weird. It was half a creepy drama about a ventriloquist. And then they'd cut in with five to 10 minute song and dance numbers at a burlesque house. So <laughs> I, you know, I don't know. It's, they were, they were stumbling their way into how to entertain people with films. I think. But, yeah, uh, sure. They were yeah. I, I, I didn't hate the movie, but I I didn't like it. I, I was like, eh, this is like, again, I watch these movies all the time. So the, I'm very calibrated in 1935. Yeah, don't get me wrong. Right in the, that's right yeah. in the wheelhouse. Myself. I'm not one of these dummy, oh, it's black and white. It's like, yeah, oh, yeah, wrong. Yeah, okay, you, that's fine. So is Eraserhead. But I, <laughs> I'm not one of those people. Yeah, right. And I'm not one of those people. But in this case, yeah, this was just, this was just a little too slow for me. Um. Not gonna poop on it because again, I think there's some value to it for someone yeah. like myself. Yeah. Now you tell me because it seems like you liked it a little bit more the second well, time yeah. around. Yeah, the first time around, I was oh, I was not happy camper. I was like, I was a god. I, I I was thinking actually, and going into it this morning, I'm like, Ben, I don't know. It's pretty early. You're still tired. Mm-hmm. I don't know if this is gonna perk you up any because I was thinking, <laughs> you know, and I was kind of laughing to myself. I'm like, yeah, man, you. And even like well, the first ten minutes into it, I'm like, man, if you if you want to put yourself to bed at night, you watch this film and right. you're done. You're gonna win right to sleep. But um, I did really try to key more in on his his dialogue and a couple scenes that I I, I know I missed some stuff like with him and the other guy because I know that one guy, Doctor Thompson, was that Dwight Fry? Uh, I believe so. Guy, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, he uh, he he was up. He knew. Dr. Crispy. I'm calling him Crispy. (laughs) Yeah, Dr. Thomas. Yeah, I just didn't know his name. Yeah, but that was it. Yeah. He knew he was up to something, you know, and uh, there was a noodly fight between them guys. Uh, Wouldn't be the 30s without one. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) But, uh, but, you know, actually, as it went on and and then even during that noodly fight, like, Dr. Crispy looks more kind of like a because he's like strangling them out, you know, and he he Uh, looks more kind of like a mafia guy. uh Uh-huh out of a mafia movie, you know, than he does like a doctor, like my sweet Dr. Kevorkian. 
you know, his nice, his bedside man. Right. <laughs> you could learn from him. But yeah, uh, it, so I did enjoy it. Like I said, I just thought like it, it, it was just a little too slow paced. It's slow. Um, yeah. It's very slow. Yeah. But I, I did enjoy it much more the second time. Um, so I, I, I still don't, I, like you're saying, Tim, the only people I could really recommend this to is, yeah, is film aficionados that, yeah. you know, uh, or someone, nice or horror aficionados. I'm glad I saw it. It's not yeah. something I'm going to go back to anytime soon. No, but you got uh, you but, got a couple of snooty points for digging it. Yeah, you got a couple of snooty yeah. points for getting through it, and yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, and then I did enjoy parts of it, and I like watching. You know me, Tim. I like watching these older films, mostly f- lots for the visuals, but also for um, the dialogue. Yeah. Some of the dialogue in these older ones, and now some is silly. You know, you, you know, yeah. You're not gonna call a guy, uh, uh, you know, your mutt or whatever. Yeah, yeah, you know, or right, right. Something's you're not, you know. Now some of that stuff is dated, right? Some of the, you know, but 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 really good writing lasts a, a, a lifetime or forever. You well, know? And there, and, yeah. So. If, had this been a half hour, I think it would have been much more. I mean, but <laughs> how you gonna? You can't have a feature film that's half hour long. No. There wasn't a whole lot of television shows running around the countryside in 1935. You know, so. <laughs> It is no, what it is, but no, I I still think this is more of a this is more suited for a Twilight Zone half hour episode. It's yeah, slow. I'll give you that. It's it's I like Stroheim, but man, he, he needed to pump up the volume here of like one or two yeah, notches a little, a little bit. He was he was a little tired. He was a little tired. I mean, yeah. I'm sure he wasn't too excited that he was stuck on this movie, but then again, he's working. You know, I mean, yeah. Stroheim. I'm not going to go through it because we're running long, but. Yes, people look up Stroheim. He's an interesting. He's an interesting okay. cat. He's an interesting yeah. uh, kind of a charlatan in a way. Huh? Uh, he's yeah. sort of invented who he was. Let's put it that way. He's I'm a self-invented of, man, you know, in a way, and which is kind of like pretty, what the potentate's trying to do. A little bit, a little bit. <laughs> except you might have a run for your money with how grandiose his uh, yeah, heel character was going. Yeah, yeah. but uh, yeah. he was a rascal. He was a rascal. Yeah. So I'm gonna just. I, I'm gonna. Eh, and then the only reason to watch the crime of Dr. Crespi is if you're an old cinemaphile completist. Yeah. If you run across it sometime, give it a chance. Mm, I'm not going to recommend this to somebody that like wants, wants to go see Predator or something. It's just, you're not going to like yeah. this movie, you know, but uh, I'm glad you didn't hate it though. It seems like, so I'm going to, eh, no. what do you, what do you, uh, you know, Tim, I'm going to give it just a very, very, very mild great paper. Interesting. Only for the yeah. fact that, you know, I said it, it, it is something I think people need to see if you like, if you're a completist or you're a or a horror completist. or a dedicated smoker, <laughs> yeah, or <laughs> you just like good bedside manner, right? You might enjoy this movie. I don't know. Yeah, it, it's um, I really didn't like it at first. The second time I did enjoy it, but that's good for me because I, I I'm much better watching movies a second time sometime because right. I find out more. This one. I, We've had real low expectations going in the second time. Gotcha. But I'm glad I did. And but uh, it's just eh, mm, it's not one of my favorites from this gotcha. time period. That's for okay. sure. All uh, right. By any means, <laughs> by any stretch. Right. But uh, as far as yeah, you, I think people need to see it if you have if you haven't and you want to. I said, you want your teeth drilled or you like going to the dentist? You might like this. <laughs> I'm just kind of surprised that you mild. Gra- I went, yeah. and you mild grape aped up a yeah, movie from very, 1935 starring Eric von Stroheim. <laughs> yeah. You reacted yeah. better to it than I did. Yeah. So. But I've seen the good stuff. I've seen the real good stuff. Yeah. So that's uh, why well, it's kind of bothersome for me. But uh, well, let's move on, Mr. Yeah. Ben Harley. Let's move on 53 years. 53, 53 years, years wow. 1988. We're also going to move the locale to Canada. Okay, we're going, yeah, yeah. We're going to 1988 right. Canada. Nice. We were in search of Zap Rosdauer, but we came across <laughs> The Carpenter. The Carpenter. Oh, 1988, boy, yeah. starring Wings Hauser. Yeah. Who, now, Wings me? Hauser might not quite be Eric von Stroheim. But in no. the 80s, he's kind of an Eric von Stroheim to me. I like I yes, like me some yeah. Wings Hauser. He's a he's a trip. I like his kid. Yes. I like his kid Cole Hauser. Cole, Cole Hauser, Hauser was the one of the stars of the film Pitch Black. Okay. Uh he was the cop. He on on board the ship that was always after Vin Diesel. He was his nemesis. 
Ah, yeah. Okay. Okay. All I right, like yeah. him. And 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 Cole and Wingshauser both have very distinct voice and voicings to how they talk. And okay, I, yeah, I kind of yeah. enjoy listening to it. I don't know why. I, I like hearing it in these films and stuff. So, okay. Again, from 1988, the Canadian opus, uh, The Carpenter. <laughs> <laughs> Let me get back a movie guy and give you a short uh, storyline synopsis here. Here we go. You ready? Yeah. Yeah. All right, here we go. A mad woman and her cheating husband hire men to fix up their new house. Mysterious carpenter, Ed, becomes her guardian angel. But he is actually an executed killer whose spirit has returned to finish the dream house he once started. Yes. There it is. That, that's, that's it. The woman is that's in it. a... She's in a... Um, Oh, let's say once again a mental health facility yeah. of some sort, and she of gets some sort, yeah. she gets released in a very odd way. Uh, boy, that doctor that released her, the old codger, he had a good <laughs> yeah. sense of humor about mental health. Very <laughs> he good. Did. He certainly did. Very didn't good he? sense of humor about that. Uh, so her and her <laughs> jerky ass husband, or whatever. Uh, they, they get their old house out in the, the countryside or whatever. Yeah. And yes, they hire a bunch of guys to start fixing the house up. It's a fixer upper, yeah. right? It's no, a fixer upper. Yeah. And uh, late at night, she's sleeping, trying to sleep, and she hears a saw going and hammers and circular saws mm-hmm. and things like that. So she goes down to her basement, discovers that in the middle of the night, Wings Hauser uh, is working on her house. Yeah. Now, yep. Mr. Ben Harley, I got a brand new house. Uh-huh. Glad I didn't sleep here before it was finished. Because <laughs> if I wake up at three o'clock in the morning and I went down and discovered Wings Hauser in the basement, <laughs> I might be on my way to sunny California right now in the back of some kind of ragtop car, screaming, <laughs> drinking beer, and singing a whole lot of Led Zeppelin tunes. That's Just right, letting yeah. you know right now, me and Wings would have <laughs> spread our wings and went across the uh, countryside. It would That's not right. have went well for anyone. <laughs> no. So. <laughs> But so, yes, she finds Wingshauser. And uh, the second time she finds Wingshauser, he's cutting arms off and shit. So he basically is a phantom fixing up the house. And anybody that pisses her off or gets in his way, they're going to they're going to get some carpentry tools to the body. And it's not going to be good for them. Mm -mm. Uh, So now, again, I know about this movie. I did not. I've never even heard of the crime of Dr. Crespi until I bought it. I discovered that on IMDb looking through Stroheim's work. Uh, okay, yeah. The Carpenter, on the other hand, I've seen that VHS since I was t- t- 12 years old or something. You know, I mean, so. Sure, yeah. Um, well, that's that's impossible because I was born in 73. So I've been 16 or something. When I, saw, <laughs> yeah. I was a kid. Yeah. I was a kid. You and I, a kid. I know the Leave movie, but I never grabbed yeah. it. I never picked it up and never no. watched it. The, the the cover art is like Wings Hauser standing at the big drill looking like he's going to, you know. She's going to hold you up for your lunch money or something. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And uh, it just did not look very interesting to me. Uh, but it had me streaming on Netflix. Or I'm sorry, on Amazon Prime. Yeah. So we decided to watch this Canadian bacon piece of movie. Uh, so anyway, Ben Harley, pick it up there. Yes. So what do we got? Oh, yes. Yeah. That's my first time as well, Timo. So be gentle. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Carpenter. Yeah. Same thing. I'd seen this, you know, uh, for years on the shelves and never picked it up as yeah, well. Yeah, me neither. Yep. Um, yeah, you know, um, yeah, it is kind of funny because as in uh, The Final Terror, mm-hmm. uh, maybe it's me, Tim. Or maybe it's, I don't know. Maybe it's because I'm surrounded by mental people. I don't know. Right? <laughs> but I, I I picked on pretty quick that she might slip a gear Yeah, at some point in this film. Right. And, uh, you know, uh, she... And she didn't do it real quick, but she did. She did slip a gear. Yes. But, yeah. But, you know, the carpenter, he was a swell fellow. He, you know, he 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 was nice to her, much nicer than her husband was. Yes. Oh, uh, that's, that's a fact. Yep. Oh, yeah. You know, <laughs> he, was he was actually gentle. <laughs> the friendliest and most likable slasher that, that I can, ever met. That yeah. I can recall ever <laughs> seeing. And he's a deep thinker. And he's a very deep thing. Yeah, I was very kind of rooting deep for him. Yeah, I was too. Yeah. You know, but yeah, I did. I did enjoy the fact that yeah, he, uh, yeah, anybody that pissed her off or whatever did not end up well. Right. Like, um, <laughs> there's some nice haircuts, Tim. And I know you and your mustaches. You have a thing with mustachios. Uh, yeah. I got a thing with mullets, and I had a mullet. I had a bitchin' mullet. Yeah. Hockey but, hair. Hockey hair. Yeah. yeah. 
I think, yeah, there was a lot of hockey hair in this film, my friend. You guys call them uh, hockey hair mullets. I call them ape drapes. But yeah, that's okay. That's yeah. all right. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, there's a lot of mullets uh, working on the house. Uh, guys that are working on the house with yes. some nice mullets. But uh, there's a couple strange ones. And there's a there's a scene where, like, they're meeting at the local watering hole. Yeah. And uh, it is like the... I, I don't know if I've ever had a conversation with any of my friends or social anybody that was quite like that conversation or even had that kind of <laughs> pattern of speech right. or it's I Canadian. It's Canadian. Remember I didn't get, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. I, and I've talked to some Canadians. I play hockey with them and they don't seem to talk quite. Yeah. But you don't have a camera on that. You don't have weird. a camera on them. Yeah. I don't know. It's <laughs> awful. That, yeah. that was painful. I'm like, this is a really painful scene, but yeah. the one genius gets the idea to go back to the house yeah, now wait a minute. Now hang on here. So this guy, this this yeah. young, he's he's working on their house. Yeah, and yeah. he does the old like I, you, I've never. I'm, we've had a lot of work done and built homes and done stuff yeah. done Harley. Yeah. and I've never had a hot dude hang his head in my in my kitchen window and and tempt me. And I've no. I've, I've walked around without a shirt. I've done everything I could think of. I've never <laughs> had it happen. I've been seeing this since Poltergeist. You know, it's yeah. like I haven't seen this kind of thing, and I, I'm telling you right now. So the guy comes back to basically rape her, holding yeah. a bottle of wine. Yes. So he he hits yeah. on the wife. The wife says, "Get the kid lost," and yeah. and then so the guy is telling his friends that like he's kind of bragging, lying a little bit, saying he's yeah. got a date with her. So he ends up going back to try to force the date on her. Yes. In a way. Yeah. Now, now the thing, the reason I stopped is because this was like. The one thing about this film, there was really no buildup to Wings, his character, no. his carpenter, no. Ed. There was really no buildup. You meet him in the basement. He sounds like a genuine <laughs> fellow. He doesn't even seem to be supernatural whatsoever. He's just down there working. No. Yeah. And then Wings just comes up Give out that of... that extra special yeah, treatment, treatment. Exactly. Place. And then yeah. Wings comes up out of nowhere and takes a circular saw and saws the guy's arms off. Yep. With no problem yeah. at all, by the way. They kind of no, fall not off. even a not even a sound. I don't even went in. I don't even stuttered. It's just, the yeah. guy was cooked medium. The, the yeah. meat fell off the bone. <laughs> yeah, basically, he cuts this guy apart, and there really he is yellow. Yeah, really is no buildup. Like uh -uh. At all. he just comes out and starts wah, starts going crazy, and um, you don't even know what the hell is going on. And but then they have to throw in a sleazy sheriff character to come yeah. in. And eat donuts. Uh, he likes the sugar ones. I remember that. And he that was a very odd, odd scene. It was as well, weird. It? it was as weird as the scene. And you remember the scene in Cabin Fever when the cop comes yeah. to the when he comes to the fire, the the bonfire. He yeah. sits down and starts going. I know how to party. And he's like a yeah. sheriff ranger or something like that. Actually, there's a whole documentary about that kid. He's oh, really? homeless. Yeah, he's homeless. And he was in like, I think he was in Independence Day and that. <laughs> Wow, know. it's a weird documentary, but anyway, so it kind of reminds me of that a guy comes out of nowhere, sleazy as shit, yeah. and he sits down only to give Wings his character's backstory. Yeah, which I'm glad yeah. because it got his backstory, but then yeah. he had to sit there and look at this guy. You know, oh. the whole thing. I'm like, wait a minute, why did she let this guy in and not the other guy who brought her wine? Uh, yeah. Of course, the cop does have a badge. You might want to yes. let him in. I want to let him in. So, but uh, yeah, yeah, but she's she's on she's on you know the carpenter's uh, train now because yeah. yeah, once he lops that kid's arm off, she just kind of like lazily kind of saunters upstairs. She kind of digs it. She digs it. Yeah, yeah. She knows he's gonna get chopped up, and she yeah. just goes to bed. Yep. Doesn't even cover her ears. Just mm, goes to bed. Nope. So she kind of, she's digging it. She's liking the yeah. attention because her husband is not very attentive. He is, no, however, attentive with yes. one of his students. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he is. Yeah. He's got a little something on the side. Mm -hmm. And then finds out what, Timo? She lays it on him. She's pregnant. Yep. 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 I called yep. that one as soon as I saw him having an affair. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, here it comes. I was like, here yep. it comes. Here it comes. So friend. basically, Wings is her guardian angel in a way. Yes. And yeah. she's she's nuts about him. Yeah. Literally and figuratively. <laughs> uh, there is a decent character. Her sister, I guess, comes, yeah. comes onto the scene to give her a little backbone and a little touch of reality in sure. a way, yeah. I guess. Um, 
There's a couple things too. One, I some of this I like. I have to admit something to you. I I thought I was gonna hate this, especially in the first ten minutes. I'm like, oh god. Yeah. No wonder I haven't seen this. Normal watching. Yeah. Yeah. By the end of it, I was like, this isn't that bad a movie. I'm enjoying this. I I, I was like, it's okay. It's just a little jumpy and clumsy. It's a little. Yeah. Stuff just flies out at you. Now, Ben Harley, I know you had a problem when the guy had his arms torn off. <laughs> yes. I looked over to Angie and goes, where yes. did they put his arms? Yes. Where could his arms be? You know? <laughs> it was like, oh, the guy was like, God. look, if you have a character who who is going to have his arms torn off, don't get a guy with Lou Ferrigno size arms. No. You're not going to hide no. him well. You're not no, gonna, when the guy all of a sudden goes from like 170 pounds to 240 <laughs> yeah. looking, it's just weird. Something's yeah. wrong. So the guy's hiding his arms in his shirt, getting the fake ones ripped off and stuff. Yeah. Um, not, it's not, this isn't like a really very bloody movie. Right, right, no, uh, not really. It's kind no. of goofy. It's, I think this is more of a black comedy, more of a dark comedy. I, you know, black I, comedy, I'll go along with you on that too. Yeah. I think I'll, yeah. yeah. Definitely Canadian. I mean, that's for <laughs> sure. But <laughs> yeah. I, I, there's a couple words that they were said that I was like, oh yeah, there it is. Right. There's a couple, and I was like, but it wasn't a boot, right? Or oh no, I like heard that. a lot of a boots. I heard a lot of a boots. Yeah. I heard a lot a of dollar. Yeah, I heard a lot of all that stuff. Yeah, we were making fun of that too. Um, I will say one thing that this movie is carried on the shoulders of Wingshauser. I mean, Wingshauser to me was just great as the carpenter, and everybody else in the movie was okay. You know, it was like they were all there. But if you would have had somebody kind of boring as the carpenter, if you wouldn't yeah. have had Wingshauser, this movie would have failed completely. And sure. I think Wings carried this movie. Um, and look, this isn't a cinematic masterpiece, but it's more entertaining than I would have expected. There's a yeah. reason I didn't pick it up since it was, it's 2018. What is that? 30 years ago? There's yeah. a reason I haven't picked it up for 30 years until now. And it just doesn't look good. It didn't sound interesting. It sounded like another dumb supernatural <laughs> killer who's not only unstoppable, but there's no rules for him. Right. I think it's what right. I didn't like about like, the Nightmare on Elm Street and all that stuff. There's no rules for him. And this movie yeah. has a very simplistic set of rules where you it, it makes sense. He every night, every night, let's get back to <laughs> every night yes. he's working on the house when the when the real workers are gone. And the real workers are getting pissed off because it's a union thing. So they're yeah. getting mad that, that they got scabs coming in, college students coming in, doing their work for them at night, not knowing doing it's Wings right. Hauser. Right. Yeah. Doing it right. So basically what it is is as the house becomes better and more finished and strong and and all that, Wings becomes more. Yes. Um uh, embodied it's yeah as so goes the house so goes wings and there's a character who comes in they these two characters they get mad because they get fired off the site so they come in they want to screw the house up and they start cutting up the wallpaper on the walls yeah and wings looks down at his arm and he has a cut in his arm so therefore you know how to destroy wings and as soon as i saw yeah. the cut in the arm i knew exactly how this movie was going to end i knew exactly yeah how it was going to end but that was the other thing too because when did the the lady, the main yeah. woman, when did she come in contact with the information? If you beat the shit out of the house, you got him. Did the, I don't know. I, I see what I'm saying? Where it was like kind of jumpy yeah. and clumsy. Like they yeah. just started doing it. Like wings got upset and they said, oh, we loved you up until now. And then started hitting yeah. the house. So it kind of jumped yeah. around. You're just like my husband. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So the motivations jumped awful quickly. Around yes. in this movie, so that that was a little bit of a of a um, I don't know, a fall to the film. I will say one thing though: the full body burn at the end of this movie, the stunt, yeah, was fantastic. Yeah, it yeah, was it incredible. Was. That was a great full body burn. And Mr. Ben Harley, we've seen a few of them because yes, some of our favorite are. movies have some of the most classic full body burns mm -hmm. of all time. <laughs> all Halloween yeah. Two, The Thing, both thing, versions yep. of The Thing, yeah. and. This was a good one, man. This was a really, really good one. So I, I kind of appreciate this film, Mr. Ben Harley. I really did. And I did not think I was going to. And it kind of took me by surprise. I'm going to give it a great bait up. Normal. And, and Normal. maybe tiny on the mild side, but not super mild. Not, I mean, I, I thought this was fairly entertaining. I was a little taken back by it. I was like, this ain't bad. And I'm going to give Wings Hauser some credit. I enjoyed watching him. Yeah, I couldn't wait to see him. 
And when he was on screen, I liked him. I thought he was good at what he did. He didn't play his character as a mustachio twirling evil villain. No, he at played like all. a Harlequin romance. Yes. With a, with a circular saw that'll cut your arm off. Yeah, I'm gonna, you know, Timo, uh, same thing. Very mild. I, mm. I didn't really like it a lot. It uh-huh. was okay. It was okay. I, I, you know, I did, I did like the fact that she kind of was crazy too yeah. alongside him. Yeah. I did like that because I didn't think that was gonna happen. I thought she's gonna find out, you know, and then she's gonna, you know, and then she's gonna turn on him and then, you know, which she did, but she went along with it for quite a while. Yeah, this she didn't, just, yeah. right, this didn't go where you thought it was gonna go necessarily. Mm-hmm. This had a different and I liked feel to that. it. I did too. Yeah. I did too. And so I liked that. So that, that saved it for me. I think, um, eh, you know, it, it, it doesn't look great. It looks okay. Um, I think maybe if there was a couple more things, killings maybe, but I'll tell you, uh, what he he did to her husband was insane. I was like, "Wow, that's yeah. okay. All right, well, that's that's about enough. That's really about enough. <laughs> right." right. <laughs> you know, so, but um, yeah, I'm just gonna give it a mild grade, babe. Up to you, buddy. Well, the other thing too that needs to be mentioned is that it's it's a little weird. Like the characters, yeah. there's a little bit of David Lynch in this. Like somebody yeah. watched Twin Peaks and yeah. made this movie too, because some of the characters are odd. She gets a job at a paint store, and those guys are odd. Oh, He's playing the drums with really. the with the paint. <laughs> the paint spinners or yeah, whatever. Like, yeah, yeah. Well, like her boss, like her sister comes in, like who's your boss, or whatever, and, and she's kind of cute. Her, 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 and her sister. Yeah. You know, like her sister was much more like a beautiful woman or whatever. Yeah. And I'm like, wait a second, this nerd. That guy was like, he came up and <laughs> right, yeah, he was a little <laughs> he nervous, couldn't even, uh, a little nervous, yeah. But uh, <laughs> so again, it's just an interesting film. Now, without wings, I. I don't. I think I'd poop on this, or, okay, or, yeah. or at least maybe not even say "Great Ape Up" in the whole thing. But Wings sure. elevated it to me. Wings elevated it. I just I can't. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I'm gonna yeah, my old grape. So basically, it's kind of really mild. I think for both. I think I like the Carpenter a little bit more. I think you like Doctor Crespi a little bit more. Yeah, uh, which bit. seems backwards, but hey, Mister Ben, yeah. that's that's the way it goes. That's, that's why we do this, right? But it's not really like very aggressively in either direction, though. I, don't, I think no, I think uh-huh. both of us could probably fall depending on what mood we're in. Either sure. way, on this, yeah. you know, at all. So, but I am glad that this is. I might be the first time we've done a show, Mister Ben Holly, where at least I haven't seen either movie. Yeah, this no, might be the I first see. time. To be honest with you. That so, might be, brother. You, yeah. I tell you. I'm the first for everything. Man. There is. And I'm glad. I'm glad I saw both Me movies. Too. I'm very glad. I can put those up in my my little mental filing cabinet now for yeah. all the crazy films I've seen. So speaking of crazy films, Mr. Ben Harley, I know next week we're gonna have some wild and crazy yeah. films. I, I can just can, I guarantee it. I can tell. I can, I know the mood of Mr. Ben Harley. I can tell yes. that we're gonna have some crazy and wild movies next week. So stay tuned for that. And yes. until then, stay spooky, and we'll talk to you then. Keep it creepy, people. You've been listening to the Timo and Harley Show, brought to you by ScreenPrintingFactory.com, your affordable one-stop solution to all your screen printing needs. <laughs> <laughs>